going on family. <clears throat> Had an event coming up today. Sorry about the last minute notice. Been a lot of things going on around the country. So since I'm here in Atlanta, you know, we've been sitting down, we've been sitting down a lot talking about uh you know all the things happening in real estate and the, the uh, homelessness and entrepreneurs having problems with the businesses, you know, employees being laid people people working for people being laid off and just strategies are at hand or at need here. So we decided to put together uh, three weeks of presentations of not presentations, but just talking and strategizing in the community. So I'll be up at rock. I'll be at to see these raw food reality uh, today at 6 PM to 8 30 PM. And it's going to be like an open forum Q and a, you know, I'm gonna do a little talking, but mainly, dropping solutions, answering questions. You know, this thing is, it's gone kind of way too far in a major way because people are, uh, you know, you got people moving out to Atlanta, Georgia in large numbers, moving out to Louisiana in large numbers, South Carolina in large numbers, you know, Florida, uh, Las Vegas, a lot of people leaving California and New York because of the high cost of living. So those places got strategies on how to get over on people on our people so i'll be there dropping today i'll be here i'll be upstairs at the Sealy's raw food reality in the i am ascension temple that's at 1057 1057 ralph david albernathy it's only a low cost of 25 dollars so come on in come on upstairs and let's talk about it y'all because it's you know it's it's crazy how People will lose everything because they're scared to ask a question. They're scared to ask for help. What we got here? Leading by example. How you doing? Ronette, how you doing? What we got over here? Kwaku, what's going on, family? You know, it's like I got solutions and answers and strategies, but yet we have a lot of people who are still losing their property. So they're still can't find they're moving out of states when they don't have to so it's all about communication so i'll be talking about that today the conversation of what people should be doing where should they be going you know what should they be uh, asking how do you know they're listening to the right person because we're being bamboozled with a lot of people being planted in our communities pretending to be solutionists and strategists and we're here to help and the reality is they don't know anything about real estate or they know everything about real estate and their investors looking to buy your land, looking to buy your house or take it from you if they know you don't have any money. I've been dealing with situations like that. We have people who, who are genuinely seeking help and, and got problems with their uh, houses that someone left them. And, you know, it's so much so much controversy all the way up to the so much corruption all the way up to the highest levels of meaning people, the banks are getting over on people, you know, people are leaving their houses to their children, you know, for after death or doing death, people got wills and they still having problems. You know what I mean? So we got to do a lot of talking, a lot of strategizing, a lot of solutions, you know, a lot, of, I have a lot of solutions for a lot of this stuff. So, you know, we just got to come together and talk about it. So I'm in Atlanta. I'll be out here for the next three weeks. I'll be out here longer than that, but, you know, uh, I'll be committed to giving a training class upstairs at the Sealy's for only $25 for the next three weeks. You know, to kind of like just bring solutions to the community. Let's talk about it. 
you know, it may not be affecting you today, but when you come in and listen to the things that other people are talking about, you may realize, wait a minute, you may be next on the list. I think the saddest thing is when people will come to me or I'll meet people and they'll be like, oh, I'm cool. I don't need any help. I, my situation is great. And then six months later, they in front of me saying, hey, Remember what you was talking about a long time ago? Well, you know, that's happening to me now. And I want to know what were you saying back then? You know, see, family, we got to realize when something is affecting black people that it may affect you, too. So don't wait till it happens to you to go decide to be a part of something to find out the solutions and the strategies, because the best solution is to know about it before it happens. You know, be proactive. It's like they say, eat healthy. They tell you to eat healthy. Okay, why do you want to eat healthy? Oh, because people getting sick, people dying early. So if you start eating healthy now, then that may not be a situation you have to deal with. You may go into your old age instead of eating all this bad food and drinking this bad drinks and bad alcohol and smoking bad weed because you didn't know nothing about it. But now we here we are talking about it. So that may make you say, wow. I need to stop doing that right now so I won't have to deal with that later. You know what I mean? So that's what we got to start paying attention to. DJ, how you doing? You know, we got to start paying attention to that type of stuff. We can't sit back. Huh. We can't afford to continue to sit around thinking, oh, that ain't got nothing to do with me. That ain't my problem. That's on them. They should have handled their business. You know, I remember when I was in Lamert Park. And I was helping the vendors from being kicked out of the park. I was stopping that whole gentrification in Lamar Park, California, mm -hmm. back in the days. You know, I was the one who called out gentrification in Lamar Park so because I've seen it before. So I had a whole lot of strategies on things that we can do to stop it. So that's why that's how my name really got really big in the community is when I was able to go up against the city, when I was able to go up against the the people who was planted in our communities that look like us and shut them down. You know, I'm not here to brag about it. I'm just here to tell y'all that it is possible that it's been done before. You can just literally go back to my Facebook page. But my point is, I've been there. I've done it before. You can look at my Facebook page and see when I was the president of the Lamert Park vendors, they gave me my own meetings purely based on the fact that I knew so much about this gentrification. I was the one who called it out. So they gave me my own meetings and I was able to do what I'm doing now, coaching people, telling them what's going on. You know, so fast forward the story. That's how my name hit the radar, how I, a lot of people started to learn who I was because they thought because I did something that they said that wasn't possible. I did something that nobody had ever been able to do in 28 years of fighting and, and, and battling and, her, and being harassed. I shut all that down for three years, you know. Why did I say three years? Because I left and I started traveling a lot now because I didn't, you know, I guess the people who was around wasn't taking notes, wasn't paying attention. They was just sitting around. Let TJ do everything. Let him do all the talking. He's here every weekend. There's no reason for me to learn this stuff. So sure enough, as soon as I left to go start traveling and speaking around the world, because Dr. Sabi opened that door for me to start speaking, all of a sudden they came and swooped in and took the part from the people. LeVar, how you doing, brother? You know, so they swooped in and took the part from those people because one person can't be there every day. One person cannot be the one that holds everything down. We need many people like TJ. So that's why I'm having these meetings every Tuesday for the next three weeks talking about the things that I've done. Gentrification is preventable if you know the solutions like I do. If you know the strategies, if you can recognize it, all this stuff about real estate it's normal. All this stuff going on with entrepreneurship. I've been dealing with the warfare, the business warfare and real estate warfare all my life. You know, all, not all my life, but I've been dealing with real estate since I was, I've been owning real estate since I was like 21, 22 years old, you know? So I can't tell you how many times people try to take something from me, you know? So I'm just very well versed in these strategies. I've been having a business since I was a young person. You know, I can't tell you how many times somebody tried to take my business, steal my ideas or something like that. So I am very well versed in these situations. So that's why, you know, the universe opened the door for me to turn around and write this book 
Dr. Savy said, you need to write that information down. You need to teach others. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that's where this book came from. And I had to endorse it to our good brother here on the back. Rest in peace, Ancestor Savy. That was my coach. Oh, by the way, if you want this book, you can go to the link Facebook on Facebook, uh, Monetizing Gentrification. Uh, or you can cash at me $32 plus your address. And I will send you a copy of this book. As long as you're in the U.S., it's $32. If you're outside of the U.S., send me your information. I'll get you a price on how much it'll cost to ship it to you. But uh, I wrote that book full of solutions after I traveled the country, and I saw things, what was going on around the country. And I just put a book, I created a book full of solutions, you know. And I'm working on a documentary now. So, matter of fact, if y'all like to make a donation, the donation box is not box, but the donation Cash App is on my Facebook page. Uh, money sign is Cash App. Money sign Thomas T J Lofton. That's L O F T I N, L O F T I N. You know, uh, we got a lot of things. I got a lot, a lot of good things coming up to help our community. So, if y'all, if y'all don't mind supporting, I appreciate it. Something, you know, if you got five dollars, that's cool. I don't care. As long as it's something that helps. You know, if you could share this video on your Facebook page, that's help too. Remember, all help ain't monetary. You know what I'm saying? So if you like to support what I'm doing by giving these training classes and these uh Q&As and uh, just answering questions for people, a lot of people are having a hard time with their real estate and they just got one question that they need to be answered. And I can answer a simple question sometime and people walk off and thank you, TJ. That's all I needed to know. One question can change a person's whole life, y'all. But it's when you don't have no one to answer that question. It's when it'll mess up your life. You see what I'm saying? What's going on, Teresa? How you doing? You know what I'm saying? So if y'all want to support that so I can keep doing this kind of stuff, if you want to sponsor a seat, you know, y'all can cash at me a donation. Or y'all can go to the Eventbrite at Monetizing Gentrification. On you, I'm sorry, go to Eventbrite at building black ownership because that's what we're doing y'all we got to build this black ownership i got to keep on touring and keep on talking about it you see we change in the wave since i start talking about remember i was talking bad about college no offense anyone it just needs college alone is not enough we need to make some investments in real estate in business ownership family not in the stock market but in real estate and business ownership so i started bashing college and calling them out calling them out. Now you hear everybody's starting to do that now because the the cloak have been taken off of the colleges and we see that they're struggling too much student loan debt. The colleges don't have enough money. They're not teaching our children about ownership. They're not teaching them about real estate. They're not teaching them about entrepreneurship. You know, the numbers of people who actually graduate from a university and come out and start a business or even buy a home is very low, very low. It's not even noticeable. So it's like, okay, well, that needs to be fixed, family. When you come out, when we say higher education, we mean coming home to ownership situations. You're supposed to come home and set trends and teach us what's going on with how to buy a house, how to how to build houses from the ground up, how to start businesses, how to start manufacturing. This is what we send our children off to schools for. So yes, we had problems with those schools, so I had to call them out. We having problems with uh uh, what else did I call? I called out gentrification because I saw that the real estate prices are too expensive. Even our college students who are supposed to be the best of the best cannot afford to purchase a home. And if they can't afford to purchase a home with education, what's happening to the people who didn't go to college? So I had to call that out. And I said, that is called gentrification. That's what made me write, write that book. Ancestor Savy said, look, you need to share this information. You need to let people know you exist. In fact, I'm going to help you because I want the world and I need my people to know who you are because my people, he said his people was having problems. You know, the conscious community, our conscious community is having problems. Everybody in the world, black was having problems in one way or another and needed some kind of help. It's not so many people who are doing good. We got people who got 50 million, a hundred million dollars and they having problems because they're being targeted. Y'all hear what I said? So just because you got a hundred million dollars, Elaine, how you doing? Just because you got a hundred million dollars in your name and you're a pro football player or the biggest black actor, don't mean your situ your world is a great place. It don't mean you living in a great situation. Every day, someone, some athlete, some 
basketball player, some uh, big time rapper, some big time celebrity is having some kind of financial problems because someone's targeting them to take their money. Someone's targeting them to take one of their houses or something. And these people don't know anything about that. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> Logging into your class, professor. You know, they call me all kind of names, master teacher, professor, Dr. Lofton. I didn't heard all kind of names about myself, but I appreciate that, Elaine. You know, just because you got large amounts of money, just because we look on TV and we see our favorite, whoever it is, celebrity or actor, doing some big things and riding around in their Lamborghinis, does not mean their world is a great place. Those people are the most heavily targeted to be ripped off. You got those people coming in, fake investors to my, oh, oh, Mr. Rapper, come on over here. We know you got 50 million. We want to show you some investments that you can be a part of. And they ripping them people off. So those kind of people are starting. They've been talking to me for years. That's why they call me a celebrity coach. I've been coaching them people for years. And I found out a lot of them want to help the black community, but they don't know how. So that's why I started coming in helping people, you know, became a celebrity coach, helped Dr. Savy, helped some football players, some rappers, et cetera. I've been talking to people for years. So anyway, my point is people teach us things to be very complicated. Just give me the money. Let me do it. That's the attitude people come at us with. Just you don't know what you're doing. So let us do it. And just give me the 10 million or 50 million and I'll do everything for you. I'll go back and help the black community. And then you find out that they didn't get no help. You're like, wait a minute, they didn't get no help. They didn't do what they said they was going to do. Now, where you started off trying to help somebody, it turned into a bad situation now. Now you got to go back and sue those people. Solomon, how you doing, family? So that's why I'm doing this presentation for the next three weeks. We're just going to sit and we're going to chop it up. It's a Q&A. It's an open format. Man, I can't tell y'all. Sidebar real quick. I've been in Atlanta. I've been in Louisiana for like the last two months, probably back and forth to the, you know, on the, I'm in the South, basically. That's what I'm trying to say. I've been in the South. So right now I'm in Atlanta. And then when I was in Louisiana for about a month, y'all notice when I was out there, family, I seen more gardening people, uh, cutting grass family gardeners out here in the South are making a killing. Y'all hear what I just said? If I could just pull open this window up, and let y'all see these people coming out with this driving lawnmower right now. I'm sitting in the window in my in this office up here. They got so many people that's cutting grass. I was outside just sitting out there talking the other day. And I'm telling you, I was out there for at least 30 minutes. And I saw at least seven gardener trucks go by. Seven different companies that cut grass. Your average house in, in the south has a quarter, has at least a 15,000 square foot lot family, meaning they got a lot of land in the South and they got a lot of grass because of all this rain. So don't let me keep going and going. But my point is family, we got to stop playing games and miss looking, looking over the trays and start paying attention to these trays. Annette, how you doing family? You know, we got to start paying attention to these trays because I'm telling you, these gardeners is out here making a killing. They coming over here and they be out here. Look, this guy just backed this lawnmower off this truck and he just, boom, he gone. I guarantee you in the next 10 minutes, they probably going to be up out of there. Because it's, it's was it, one, two, three. It's three of them out there. Dude, one guy headed straight to the backyard. Other dude is going to knock out the front yard. And his other guy is over here looking like he trimming the trees or something. They jumped out the truck and two minutes later, they going straight at it. I guarantee they finna be out of here in no more than 10, 15 minutes. But anyway, family, they making a killing because I bet you they probably got 20 more houses to hit today and then they do it again tomorrow. They ain't playing out here. So that is a huge business. So if you telling your children or if you telling your friends that you don't want to be no gardener and that ain't no money, leave that alone. You don't know what you're talking about because I can count money. You know what I'm saying? These guys, somebody gave me a, I made $150 to cut some grass the other day. Y'all hear what I just said? I made $150. I'm like, you going to pay somebody else that kind of money? You can't find nobody to do it affordably? I was like, well, hell, I ain't doing nothing on that on a particular day. I'll come over there and cut that. I, don't mind. I ain't too good that I can't make some money. She, let me come over there and make some of that little gardener money. You got the machine, the garden, the lawnmower, and the, and the weed eater? Oh, man, I don't mind making $150 for one day for a couple hours worth of work. 
Yeah, it took me a couple hours because I was by myself, but I ain't doing nothing on this particular day. I said, let me get out there and push that line more. So, of course, I wish that some young people was walking around, coming up the street, because I would have subcontracted it out and had them do it. You see what I'm saying, y'all? So, anyway, that's a simple solution right there. A very simple solution. You can go buy a used lawnmower. You can even get a lawnmower off of a yard sale. You know what I'm saying? Cheap. And next thing you know, you got you a business going. But anyway, uh, today I'll be at Tassili's. I'll be upstairs from Tassili's Raw Food Reality at the I Am Ascension Temple. You know, I appreciate them giving me that platform. You know, because of the level of knowledge I have, someone's always saying, TJ, we need your, your help over here. We need the community needs your help. Can you please come over here? We have a platform that you can come in here and use to teach our people, and we're going to tell them to come. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, wow. You know what I'm saying? That's when it get real. It's like I love when people say we want to help. TJ, we want to book you to come over here and speak about what you're talking about, about what you know, because it's too many people out here who's pretty smart that's losing their houses, that's losing their uh, this and that. TJ, what does this word mean? What does that mean? You know, I've been owning this house for 20 years and I ain't never heard of that. I said, yes, they keep changing the name of the real estate. They keep changing the name of the laws. They keep changing the name of the words to throw you off and confuse you and make you think you need somebody else. They're playing games with us. They're strategizing against us to make sure that people lose their houses. They're making playing games against us to make sure that people don't start businesses because they know if you're going to lose your job, the only thing left for you to do is start a business. So they will turn around and come in and tell you things like you don't qualify. You can't do this. You can't get a loan. You need a loan to start a business. You need this to start a business, you know. But the reality is we don't. All we need is information from a person like me. So that's why I have so many people booking me so much support. And that's why I decided I need to be on the East Coast, too. All these people... Think about it, y'all. I'm playing. I'm playing a long game, family. I'm not in here today just to make a hundred thousand, a million dollars, and bounce. I'm here because I see the long game is going on. They strategically coming into the black communities and dismantling the black communities, giving black people a hard time with ownership, giving black people who own something, whether it's owning a business or it's owning a house. They're giving them a hard time. They're giving black people hard times with their children in school. They're giving black people hard times with their jobs. You see what I'm saying, y'all? So this is the type of things that we'll be talking about today, sitting in uh, upstairs at the I Am Ascension Temple. We're going to have like a family discussion where we just sit in there, bring your questions and your notepads, family, because I'm, you know, I ain't no, I ain't perfect. I ain't amazingly uh, 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 perfect. But I am well versed. I mean, I am very knowledgeable on conversations. It ain't too many conversations that I run away from. Now, if you ask me about some stocks, I don't know nothing about no stocks. I don't want to know nothing about no stocks. Why? Because what? No matter of fact, what I do know about the stock market is. Let me tell you what the stock market means to me. The stock market means usually I'm gonna give a European, not me, but a person will give. What you saying here, Miss Elaine? OMG! I just almost had to stop work, work order because the Law change here. Simple work must be done by a contractor versus a property owner. Shaking my head. Oh, no. But I was persistent to say they gave me a real estate specialty permit. Permit. Shaking my head, but I'm applying and paying tomorrow. Elaine, see, what you're talking about, that's why we definitely need to connect, y'all. We got to, got, y'all got to come to these classes because what you're talking about right now is a major game changer. They're deciding, see, any homeowner can build a house from the ground up himself without having permits. You can come in and buy a piece of land and say, I'm going to build my own house from the ground up by myself. And I ain't never had no, no education on how to build a house, but I know what I'm doing. And as long as you pass the permit process, because these things to build that house is correct, you can do it. But because of politics, they're trying to draw, they ain't trying to, they're strategizing and they're raising the prices up nationally, clear across the country in certain cities. They're all trying to pass laws saying that 
you can't work on your own house. You have to have a certified, registered, or whatever word they use, contractor come in and do it himself. Why are they doing that? Because they're trying to lock African Americans out of the housing situation. So where you'll see, that is all I talk about. Real estate, building houses from the ground up. You very seldomly hear me saying anything about a flipping anything because I'm a real real estate investor. I know the long game is about sitting and holding. So when I'm building houses, I've been seeing this for years where people, I have always fought those fights when the city will try to say, well, you know what, we're having, they, they say these, they make up some lies and say, oh, we're having problems with people or, 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 or these bad contractors out here or these homeowners are fixing these houses up and they all messed up and they falling down. So we're going to pass a law to keep, keep uh, homeowners from being able to build their own houses. Well, first of all, a homeowner can't build no house or no building without passing the permit process. Y'all hear what I just said? So if you telling me a homeowner built a house and it fell down or it wasn't done right and then they sold it and the next person who got it got screwed, that's a damn lie. That's the city's fault. Why is that? Because when the homeowner started from the first thing he did, he had to pull a permit from the city. The city said, whatever you do, we want to be there and watch you and make sure you do it right. See, this is games they plan. So the city, if that homeowner was complete when he built that house and now he sold it and the new owners is coming in saying, oh, well, this house wasn't right and I got screwed over and I gave this person three fifty, three hundred fifty thousand, dollars and the house wasn't right. And now the city saying, oh, yeah, OK, we're having too many problems with people saying that. So we're going to pass a law that homeowners are not allowed to do the work like Mrs. Lane is saying. Yep, they blame the changes on real estate flippers not selling quality work, but I own and hold, so that's why they fell back for now. But see, a flipper can't do nothing without a permit. If a flipper is doing raggedy work and the city is approving it, the person, hold on one second, somebody signed off on that. Kathy, how you doing? See, this is the kind of conversations we're going to have tonight. This is the kind of conversations we're going to have tonight, y'all. Do you want to say yeah, that's Tag Thomas Lofton. He's cool. That's my brother. So this is the kind of conversation, Miss Elaine, if you was out here, we could be sitting here having the same conversation. So if you came to me, we would strategize through that. Just like I said, this is strategies that the city will come in and lie and tell us, look, y'all, we want y'all to vote on this and we want to change this law because too many people these flippers are messing up these houses and screwing over innocent homeowners, y'all. They're the reason why the housing prices are so high and messed up because it's the flippers' fault and they're not doing things right. But the reality is the flipper can't do nothing without the city approving it. So if the city comes in and says, hey, this flipper didn't build this house right, we want to pass the law, I will first, I'll be the first one to say, Okay, didn't you guys, the flipper had to pull, have to pull permits to do the work on that house? And that's when the city person starts to, well, uh, 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 the answer would be yes, but they don't want you to realize that because they don't want you, most flippers don't be sitting in those city, city meetings and stuff like that, sitting in those meetings where people are complaining. You see, it's usually the homeowners, it's usually people who've already bought a house, it's usually people who don't know nothing about flipping. Y'all hear what I said? But a person like me, I'm sitting in, the, in that meeting. I pulled my own permits for five years. See what I'm saying? That's how you learn. That's real. That's higher education, Elaine. You pulling your own permits. You're building your own houses. You're working on your own property. You're hands-on. You're hiring your own people. That's higher education to me, y'all, because that's wealth building. You're able to, to create generational wealth and teach others how things work. Mary, how you doing? So if the people see, this is the type of stuff I teach during my gentrification training class. I have a gentrification class where I teach people how to stop gentrification. I teach people how to go in these city meetings and unwind the things that they're doing. Tiffany, how you doing? So if I was in that meeting, this is the things that I did in Lamar Park, California, back when I was able to stop the city and all those gentrifiers from kicking all those black people out the park and taking the black community in Los Angeles. That's why they say 
LA for last when it comes down to gentrification because they know they had people like me that was there that was very well versed and you weren't just going to come in there and take nothing from me. You know what I'm saying? Not why I'm not why I'm on watch. So my point was, my point is, in those meetings, I would be the person that would ask the city, okay, you want to pass a law where a homeowner is not allowed to work on his or her property because they're building shabby properties like Missy Lane said, right? I would first ask the city person, I'll say, isn't there a permit process for anybody that's working on the houses? And they're not going to want to answer that question. But the answer to the question is, yes, there is a permit process. From tearing down the house, you got to get a permit. From building a house, you got to get a permit. Coming in to rehab a house, you got to get a permit. You got to change the main line. You got to change the electrical. You got to get a permit. So if they pass the permit process, then sold the house and somebody got the house said this is a raggedy house it's no good the plumbing is no good the electrical is no good the city can be sued y'all hear what i just said the city is the one who signed off on that making it possible for the contractors to come in there and do that work the city says you owe us some money to come in there and inspect it and make sure you did this electrical and it's plumbing right so if the if the new owners say that plumbing and electrical ain't right but yet the seller got a permit from the city saying it was right, then your problem is with the city. The city approved that. Laugh out loud said, didn't I pull a permit on the roof in your office, bastard? They gave me that specialty paper and ran me out of the office. Exactly. They don't like smart people. You know what I'm saying? But it's people like us that can go in these meetings and stop all that. See, while we out here, while our people was out here fighting, talking about a good job, and we need jobs, Mr. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Politician, Mr. Congress, Black person, Miss, Miss Newly a, 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 a elected politician that everybody's going crazy over because we are all of a sudden getting all these Black politicians in office and everybody gets comfortable and like, oh, we cool now. No, we not. Because we posted, y'all go to those people and ask them all the wrong questions. Talking about bringing jobs here. No, we need them to turn around and make it easy for black people to start building and getting contracts. You see what I'm saying? We need mayors to come into the school systems and put the trades back into the schools so black people can participate and be sitting there with Miss Elaine and going down. It needs to be normal for dozens and hundreds of black people by the week to go into city hall all over America and applying for permits to the point that white people will not try to screw us over because they know it's too many of us coming in there. But when it's one person by themselves, they play games. You see what I'm saying? And then you look back behind you and it's a room full of white people. They not volunteering to help the black person because they don't want the black person in the game. Y'all hear what I just said? See, this is what that Donald Trump wall is all about. They putting that Donald Trump wall up to lock out the Hispanic community so that they won't, because when they found out that America was over here doing gentrification, gentrification is, is land development, meaning construction jobs. Who's the number one construction workers? Hispanics. They're bringing more Hispanic, like you see all this big old line of Hispanics coming over here to America. They want to come over here and get jobs. We built America, they learned the building from us. Exactly. You hear we said uh, 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 black people built America. You hear that all the time. I think it was Carter G. Wilson said that. You know what I'm saying? Somebody said, no, Frederick Banneker. I think it was Frederick Banneker or something like that, the brother who built D.C. You understand what I'm saying? When they came to Africa and kidnapped black folks, they didn't go kidnap the crackheads that were sitting on the corner. They didn't kidnap the alcoholics that were sitting outside the liquor store that wasn't nobody going to miss. They came in there and kidnapped the smarter, the smart ones. So that's why they, they came over here and bought the black folks over here to come in here and build, to build this great country. Now that the country's built and they learned the game from us, now they reversed it and said, oh, y'all don't need no car carpentry classes. Y'all don't need construction. Y'all want higher education. Y'all don't need to learn. Y'all don't want nothing to do with your forefathers did. Y'all don't want to learn nothing about swinging no hammer. Nikki, how you doing? Y'all don't want to have nothing to do with building anything. Leave that to us. Let us do the hard labor while y'all sit back with y'all cushy 
a, a, a corporate job sitting in the AC looking down over the city all day. It don't get no better than that. That's higher education. I call that employee training. Y'all hear what I just said? They want to send you to employee training camp where you don't come home with nothing that got to, you ain't learned nothing that got to do with creating wealth. You ain't learned nothing that got to do with you turning around, being independent, working for yourself. You hear what I just said? Most, and I ain't finna sit here and talk about school, but the, the, the goal was to talk about what Elaine was talking about, the, the uh, uh, pulling permits and building your own houses and stuff like that. So because of the masses of us are not doing that, they're screwing people over and they're trying to pass that law all over America and stop people from doing the work. So if they can stop black people from building their own houses, if they can stop black people from contracting their work out to their cousins and family and friends to have them come do the work on these houses that they're building. Oh man, y'all think real estate prices is high now? You wait till they stop. When they shut down us from working on our own house, it's a wrap. Prices is going to skyrocket. Nikki Sumner, what's up, sis? Bring him out here. Sis. Be there. You know what I'm saying? It's it's like, yeah, as a matter of fact, we need to make that happen because we're locking these dates in. You know what I'm saying? So I appreciate that. You know, it's it's this is what bothers me because when I went into Lamert Park and I was able to successfully stop the people, from the, the gentrifiers, from coming in there, taking Lamert Park for those three years, I was the only one with that kind of knowledge because I built houses from the ground up because I overstood, I overstood, I overstand, I'm sorry, I overstand real estate development, not from a flipping perspective, but from a permit pulling process, from a, 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 a land development process. Yes, please bring the young people. Please bring the young people because we need them to get the real information. When a person like me come out and start teaching, y'all need to bring the young people, family, because they ain't never, they ain't, they very rarely gonna hear somebody like me say the stuff I'm gonna say. But from a, you can always tell a real investor from a fake investor. You can always tell a real teacher who's really dealt with real real estate from someone who knows about real estate. So what you talking about, Elaine? That's real stuff. Pulling, if you know real estate, see, that's the kind of stuff I want to talk about. That's the kind of stuff I talk about because we at war. While we sitting back and our people are begging these black politicians to bring us jobs, white people are passing laws saying we don't want African Americans pulling permits anymore. We don't want African Americans building things, saying things, you know, coming in here, building their own houses, because if we can lock African Americans out of, look at that, there go another, uh, Anyway, if we can lock African Americans, Jasmine, how you doing? If we can lock African Americans out of the contracting space so they won't come, they won't have any reason to walk in City Hall and pull a permit to, uh, to lay some pl plumbing, to pull a permit to come and have their electrical done, to pull a permit to put a new roof on, we can shut that down and turn around and skyrocket the prices of real estate, raising the median home price to a million dollars clear across America to where African Americans will not own homes. That's the strategy. That's the game, what they're doing. So my point is, what Elaine is going through, let me tell you another situation. I was in California City, California back in the days, and we were all building houses like crazy, right? So I regret, I regret back then. I, I didn't buy enough land. When I found out that they was having a housing boom because of the high prices in the early 2000s in California. That was the fastest growing city. So I turned around and I found out from some of my partners that they was building houses out there. You know, they was building houses for like 90,000. And I'm like, man, I mean, they building houses for like 50,000 and they was selling them for 90. Now that wasn't a lot of money to uh, 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 people. That's not a lot of money to the average person. But back then, that was a lot. To, that was a lot of money back then, in the early two thousands, right? So I looked at this is how I got back into the construction aspect. I was building fifty nine Chevys and fifty seven. So I remember specifically when I had this conversation, my homeboy was building houses, and he said, 
yeah, TJ, I built the house. I put about 50000 into the house, and I'm getting about 90000 walk away. And I was like, well, damn, you walking away with 40, I'm sorry, he's walking away with 40000 right? And I'm thinking like, damn, I'm building $50,000 lowriders. I got a 59 Chevy that I got 50000 in, and I'm hoping to get a hundred for it. But it's going to take me the same amount of time as it's going to take you to build the car. And I'm thinking, and the real estate prices are starting to go up. I said, I'd rather, instead of building all these cars, I'm going to take some of this money and put it into some houses. So I started buying, building houses because he said, man, TJ, these white cats, they ain't trying to collaborate with me. If you get in and start building houses, we can pool our money together and buy, buy housing supplies together and bring our values, bring the privacy prices down. So instead of him going in there buying four sets of cabinets, we can buy 10 sets of cabinets because I'm buying some too. So we started pulling our money together and we got the cost down from 50000 down to like 38000 to build a house that we were selling for 90000 So y'all know I love collaboration. So I don't claim to be an expert, but my son said this is like the Rich Paul rule. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot going on, family, but yeah. So anyway, real quick, we started building houses. Now you had the big builders, the Kaufman and Broad and all those big companies, they weren't building. They weren't building in California City at the time, right? So we opened the door up for the little man to come in there. The, the big builders were building in Palmdale, California, which was 45 minutes south of where we were, right? But because of Palmdale, California's prices went from 70000 to 400000 overnight, all of a sudden it pushed people further out to California City, California. Y'all may want to write that name down because that's, that's the next L.A., by the way. You know what I'm saying? So they pushed the more the people out to California City, California, which was uh, out two hours away from LA. I'm uh, over two hours away from Los Angeles, and that's where they're pushing the more affordable living out to. So now we was paying about thirty eight thousand to build a house and was selling it for ninety. Then all of a sudden we was getting one ten. Then all of a sudden we was getting one fifty. But the big builders was not out there. They was in Cal in Palmdale, California, in Lancaster, California. I'm dropping names on y'all. I want y'all to pay attention to these names. These are the new. These are the new LA's, new Los Angeles. So anyway, my point was, one of the big developers saw that we were out there building these houses because remember when one person started doing something. Then two people, before you know it, you got dozens of people doing it because people are smart. People see and people do. So fast forward the story. I look up where there was probably like 20 people building houses, little little spec homes. That's what, that's what you call a house that you're building yourself. So where it was about 20 people building houses, because we all used to talk, y'all. I know a lot of those cats. All of a sudden, now you had about 45, 50 people building houses, which... It was not enough of us doing it anyway. So the builders realized that they'd raised the prices up in Palmdale, Lancaster, California, so fast, so so high, so fast, that they're pushing a lot of people out to California City. So now by the time houses hit like a buck fifty, two hundred thousand, oh now the big developers came in and you know what they did? They came to the city and told the city, they said, you know what? We want to come out here and build uh, uh, build up your little small city and make y'all a big city. And of course, the city wanted to hear that. So it was a billionaire who came out there and told him, he said, told the city, they said, look, we want to come out here. We want to build y'all a movie theater. We want to build y'all a big hotel. And the city was just doing backflips was like, because they didn't have no movie theater. They didn't have no, no real grocery store. And they definitely didn't have no regular hotel. They didn't have no big, big hotel, no, you know, Best Western, no, no anything like that. Ooh. Hold on one second, y'all. Sorry about that. They didn't have anything like that. So let me tell you what he did. So with those false promises, the city got excited and said, okay, we want you to come out here and build us a movie theater, build us a grocery store, build us a big uh, eight story tall hotel where there was never anything like that before, city gets excited. First thing they do, they said, he said, oh, we can only do that on one condition. The city like, what, 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 what do you need us to do? You know, we want to make sure you guys come out here and do that. He said, we want you to stop people like TJ and all his friends and all these other little individual builders, the people who are building 
twos and fours and five houses a year. We want you to stop all of that. Now, check this out. Back in the days when I would come in there to build houses, me by myself as an independent builder, I could build as many houses in one year that I wanted to. There was no maximum amount. California City, California said, please come out here and build. We ain't going to give you no racism. We ain't going to have no problems. The permit process is very simple. We're going to put somebody on it right away because we want you to help us build this city. So they accommodated us, y'all. But as soon as that billionaire developer came out there, he said, look, I need you to stop TJ and all his friends from coming out here building, period. And the city was like, whoa, we make we making millions of dollars off TJ and all those independent builders. So the city, I was surprised that they did. See, this is when I first started going to those meetings. We put up such a big fuss about it. The cities, and we told them, look, before he was here, it was us. You gonna let us start start off? And he didn't want to come here before us. So the guy said, they're right. So no, I'm going to give them a limit that TJ and his friends can only build four houses a year. Now, I wasn't tripping because they left loopholes in the game, y'all. They left a lot of loopholes to where I can have somebody else come in there. So anyway, it's a lot of strategies. So I didn't complain, but my point was I did not like that. But but what we did do is that guy, that developer, they wanted to, to, to raise the prices up higher, but we wore them out, family. We wore them out. We were sitting in that room with all those developers, the little ones and twos and fives and six developers. We all came together and we wore that developer out to where we was all building our houses very affordably. We was putting custom stuff in that he wasn't willing to do. You see what I'm saying? So anyway, family, there's always a will. There's always a way. There's always a solution. Carmen, how you doing? So this is why, see, family, I'm very well versed in this kind of stuff. And this is why I'm talking and I'm doing these meetings and these uh, people are booking me to come to these different states and cities to come and speak, family, because I got a lot to talk about. This stuff is stoppable, but you just need to know what to say. Just like people in Lamar Park, California, they said, TJ, it's done. We got, we're got. going to walk away. We can't afford to stay here. We can't afford to compete with them. The city is too big. These people are too big, and we ain't got the money to fight them. I said, you ain't need no money to fight them. You just need the knowledge to fight. You can't fight nobody without a knowledge. They said, well, we don't have the money to pay the attorney. Well, what is the attorney doing? The attorney, you paying the attorney because he got the knowledge of supposedly, the attorney supposedly got the knowledge to go in there and fight the city, to go in there and fight the gentrificationists. But what was the world, what people didn't realize, regular people got the knowledge too. You don't have to be no attorney. So I proved that to them a long time ago when I walked in there by myself and sat in that meeting and shut the whole meeting down with pure knowledge. That's it. They thought I was a, a, an attorney. They thought I was an attorney because I was very well versed in real estate and land development and entrepreneurship. So I was able to unwind all that stuff they was doing. I was able to shut, shut that stuff down before it ever got off the ground. Because remember, don't nothing just, you can't just look up one morning that now there's a new law where you can't. It has to be voted on. It has to make sense. So if the people in the meeting talking about we need to pass this law because uh, these contractors are building these houses shabbily. They're not put. They're putting up pieces of crap, selling them to these end of these uh, innocent poor people for three and four hundred thousand. I will be the guy that will say, "Aren't you guys signing off on that, Mister City, Mister City Worker?" Shouldn't the people who who instead of them coming to you asking you to change the laws, they should be suing you because you the one who signed off on it. Why would you let them put? bad electrical in there. What did the permit person do when they went? And that shuts down the whole thing. They can't pass that law no more. We need to fire the person in the city that signed off on that. So I would be that person that would ask them that. So my point is, it's not all about me. It's about us. This is why I teach training classes. This is why I do these webinars, family. This is why I coach so many people. This is why I travel the country speaking and coaching people so that we can know how to stop this gentrification, so we can know how to keep this housing cost down. See, a lot of investors are, are very excited because the housing cost is going up and they making money. 
But uh, your average everyday person, your college graduate coming home from school with their four or five year education, they ain't smiling, family. They hurt because they ain't never going to own no homes. When houses hit 300,000 clear across America, we just wiped out the university people. They will not be homeowners, family. They will not enjoy real estate ownership like the baby boomers did. Y'all hear what I just said? When college, when, when home costs hit $300,000 clear across America, that just wiped out home ownership for your average college student because you do not qualify for a loan to buy a house at $300,000 with no, no two and $300,000 in debt and student loan debt family. That's the real. So that's why I get to speak a lot because I know the numbers. But my point is, family, all that stuff is solutionsable. Got solutions for all that. We got to go back to building. And that's what a lot of people are starting to do. They're going back to building. And that's why they're giving Miss Elaine a hard time because they don't want black people building houses. Y'all hear what I just said? Because if they, they, the goal is to remove home ownership all across the country for black people. That's what the goal is. That's why you see so much homelessness. But the reality is we start back building houses like our forefathers and our ancestors did. Housing prices are going to tumble. Y'all hear what I just said? Housing prices are going to tumble. Plain and simple, family. But come on out tonight, y'all. Y'all, Miss Elaine, you got me over here talking now. I was supposed to be getting on here, letting y'all know about my uh, my my three weeks of classes coming up. I'll be doing, I'll be speaking at to see these raw food reality for the next three weeks, uh, the thirteenth, the twentieth, and the twenty seventh. I'll be at to see these raw food reality for only twenty five dollars, family. Dropping the knowledge, dropping the game. I appreciate that person for sending that cash out. Matter of fact, if y'all want to make a donation, uh, sponsor a seat, or y'all want me to keep on doing what I'm doing, you know, I appreciate if y'all drop a cash out. Money sign Thomas TJ Lofton. Money sign Thomas TJ Lofton. That's L O F T I N. But I'll be at Tassili's Raw Food Reality tonight, today at 6 to 8 30, from 6 to 8 30 today, and the 13th, the 20th, and the 27th. And I'll be giving every day. I'll be giving training classes, trying to break things down for us. Make you know, not just training classes. We're gonna have a Q and A talk. Come on in, like Missy Lane came in into the uh, Facebook Live, and she said, "Yeah, they trying to do this and they trying to do that." And I'm like, "Boom! This is what you do." You know what I'm saying? Just like that. So that's the same thing we're gonna have today. We're gonna have conversation, family solutions. We're gonna talk about solutions and strategies. We can talk about. Your children going to college, what they doing in schools, what should we do to stop it or what should we do to make it easier? We're going to talk about real estate investments. We're going to talk about building houses, pulling permits, whatever y'all want to talk about. You want to talk about businesses and leases and, and, and rent and commercial, whatever it is. Come on out, family. We need to talk, family, because there's a lot of people having problems. And it, it hurts my heart to see somebody lost their house or lost their business because they didn't have to answer to one question and other folks would not answer for them. That hurts my heart, family. So I feel like if y'all want to, if y'all can give me $25 for my time, y'all can come in there and ask me whatever y'all want to ask me. Don't come in there and ask me, TJ, how do I make a million dollars? Because I'm going to say, you need to take my training class. I'm going to just tell you, hey, you need to get into this real estate, invest in the real estate. You can't come in there asking me to give you the whole blueprint, map it out. How do I start a this kind of business, TJ? Because I'm going to roll you into a training class. You need to take a class. You need to bring me in as a coach. But if you got some mm -hmm. questions and we just having casual conversation about things that's going on, TJ, how do I, I'm trying to rent a house and, and, the, and, the, and they said my credit is bad. We're going to talk that one through because a lot of people's having that problem. That ain't wealth building. That's just living. I'm trying to help people to live and be successful and be okay. We got too many people who got jobs making 40,000 and are homeless. Y'all hear what I just said? We got people with jobs making 40, 50,000 school teachers making 40 and 50,000 and are homeless. Y'all hear what I said? So I'll be talking about stuff like that today, family, trying to drop some solutions and helping our family. So if you would like to sponsor that, if you would like to sponsor a seat or if you would like to make a contribution, a donation so that I can keep on doing what I'm doing, please do. You know what I'm saying? So uh, if you would like to book me and bring me to your city, your state, your country, reach out to me. I'm taking bookings now. Uh, 
if you're in Atlanta, Georgia, I'll be in Atlanta, Georgia for the, uh, the 13th, the 20th, and the 27th. And I also will be speaking at the We Buy Black Conference coming up on the 23rd, 24th, and the 25th. I'll be giving a, a presentation on building black ownership as well, as well as speaking on the main stage on both days. So y'all come on out and support the We Buy Black, because y'all know I'm all about the We Buy Black, whether we buying black home ownership, like Missy, Missy Lane is dealing with real estate. I want to one day be able to come in and hire some uh, young people, black people to come in there and I want to buy my land from a black person. I want the escrow company to be black. I want the, uh, the, the title company to be black. I want the attorney to be black. And I want the developers that I'm bringing in to build my house, the plumbing, the, the gardening, the contract, con the, the contractor, the car, I'm sorry, the, the, uh, 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 the masonry work, the framers, the drywallers, the, the uh, electricians, the uh, roofers, the, everybody that build that house all the way down to the black real estate agent that sells it. I want all of them to be black. And if we turn around, and continue doing what we're doing, we're going to get that. And that's why the city is giving Missy Lane and people like me and other people a hard time. They try. They don't get to do that to me because I'm very well versed in that. So they quickly want to pull back and leave me alone. You know, because if you can't help me and you start acting funny, I'm coming in there asking for supervisor names. I'm coming in there and I'm going to show up at the next meeting with the mayor and I'm going to tell on the people in the planning department. OK, well, I'm having problems with Miss Miss Savorsky in the planning department. She doesn't seem to be very well knowledgeable. I was wondering if you can get rid of her and bring in somebody who's more knowledgeable. They'd be like, Miss Savorsky been there for 20 years. I say Ms. Savorsky's giving us a hard time. She obviously don't know what she's doing. And boy, when they find out, when they put, put on the spot like that, them people be quick to come in. Mr. Lofton, can we help you? What do you need? Oh, we, we figured it out what was going on and we got your permit for you. No problem. Solutions, family, strategies. Anyway, if y'all want to support that and keep this going to where I keep doing the work I'm doing, or if y'all want to pick up a copy of that book, monetizing gentrification reach out to me or go online at thomastjlofton.com you can pick a copy up it's 32 dollars to your door if you're in the u.s or you can just simply cash at me money sign thomas tj lofton l-o-f-t-i-n 32 dollars and don't forget your shipping information and i'll drop you a signed copy in the mail today while i'm sitting here in the office getting ready to be prepared to go to this next event you know what i'm saying the uh six from six to 8.30, we having family discussion time about life, black life, black problems, black issues. If you having children in school dealing with gang violence and bullying and you need some conversations, some solutions, some strategies, please show up today to the meeting. I'll be there for the next three weeks, 6 to 8.30. We're going to be talking about whatever it is, family. I'm doing this because I'm trying to find out, you know, what else is going on in the community. You know, my people tell me, TJ, you didn't been, you know, all about gangs and you know all about real estate, you all all about business, you know all about corporate corporate takeovers and how to lock black people out, all these different things. But you only been talking about real estate and cars. I said, I know, man. I'm just be trying to stay out the way. What's going on, Miss Vanessa? I be trying to stay out the way because I'm very controversial, y'all. I, I know when you know a lot of information. You know, you tend to piss off people sometimes. And I don't, I'm one that don't hold my tongue. That's why I was Dr. Savy's right-hand man. That's why I was his, that was my Jackner. You know what I'm saying? He don't hold his tongue. He going to say it. And he saw that I'm the same kind of cat. That's why he wanted to coach me and become my Jackner. You know what I'm saying? And, and same thing with honorable, I mean, rest in peace to Dr. Savy. Rest in peace to... uh uh, 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 Dr. Onion Palmer, the uh, creator of uh, Marcus Garvey, the first Marcus Garvey school that was also my Jagna as well. So y'all come, I come from good stock family, very well versed. So when I talk about stuff, I don't hold back. I know what I'm talking about. So I'm going to shut it down and I'm going to get it done for us. So that's why I really don't be out there talking too much because I talk with power. I talk about things that's going to get done. I don't speculate. I don't, you know, beat around the bush but anyway i see gentry what do you call this uh instagram is about to go out so again y'all y'all want to pick up a copy of monetizing gentrification go to my website thomas tj lofton 
or if you want to make a donation, book me or anything, reach out to me, Eric Code 310 619 3954. Or if you want to make a donation to uh so I can keep doing what I'm doing, doing these Facebook Live, Instagram Live, YouTube Lives, and all that good stuff, please reach out 310 619 3954. Peace. Instagram just shut off real quick. But all right, family, uh, other than that, if y'all want to make a contribution, uh, cash at me. I appreciate that cash app. Money sign Thomas TJ Lofton. So I keep on doing what I'm doing, family. Miss Elaine, y'all reach out to me. If anybody need me, want to book me, uh, uh, bring me out to speak, do a training, anything, uh, thomastjlofton.com or give me a call, 310-619-3954. And register for tonight, family. It's only $25 a day, I'm sorry, $25 per day is three weeks. Just come on out. It ain't got to take all three. It's just us talking about everyday solutions that's going on with everyday problems in, in the black community. Register at Eventbrite at Building Black Ownership or you can go to my Facebook page, Thomas T.J. Lofton. Peace, family. I appreciate y'all. Give me a call.